I've got my major BBS loaded up here. I'm going to log in. Uh, I've got difficulty with the local session. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit, uh, let me jump back to my console. I'll hit Alt-E to emulate. I'll hit Escape to do it full screen and I'll log in with my sysop username and my super secure sysop password. Uh, it's a little, it's run a little bit slow. I think it's set to emulate a slower modem connection so I'll have to go back and fix that but um, if you watch the last video on this topic this is how to get a major BBS up and running on whatever system super quick using the distribution MBBS forever dot zip that's kind of floating around the internet um, this eliminates the whole uh, vercom packaging of the, all of the TCP IP components to get it up and running and make it something that you can actually use and tell it into I wasn't too concerned about that I wanted to get up and running really quickly just so I can sort of reminisce and go back and look at the, the BBS and be reminded of the old days. So this isn't going to be something that's going to help you get this package up and running and online and uh, something that you can start serving uh, customers with. In fact, I'm not even 100% sure of the validity of this distribution. It's probably not 100% legal. And because of that, I don't really feel like I should even give you some uh, hints and tips on how to get this online and usable for other people to log in. Uh, I just don't know if this is software that belongs to other people. It might be, and there's a little bit of debate online on that topic. The whole notion here is to kind of show you how to get this thing up and running uh, so you can go back in and reminisce about the days of old. And I can see there's a couple things in the configuration that I want to change here. I'll do that. I want to see if I can make it a little bit faster. And I've got some audit trails that are being output to me because I'm a master key holder. I want to see if I can update that as well. But uh, mostly what I want to do is just get this thing up and running like I've done here and go in and look at some of these old games and stuff that I used to really enjoy on the major BBS platform. Uh, if you want to see what it takes to get this up and running on a laptop, either uh, Mac OS, on Windows, uh, on, on Linux, whatever it is, uh, independent of any sort of uh, TCP IP connectivity and Telnet capabilities, then go ahead and take a look at my last video and uh, that'll show you how to do it. I'm going to go ahead and, and just log off for right now and I'm going to take this offline and what we'll do is we'll see if we can uh, make some configuration changes to, to get uh, uh, this working a little bit better and then we'll jump in and we'll see if we can um, look at some of these old games. So if you recall, if you were a system owner, F10, F9, F10, F9 is going to take your major BBS offline. So I'll go ahead and make a couple of quick configuration changes and uh, we'll get us back up and running here real quick. Let's see, so what I'm doing is I need to go into the configuration options and I actually wanna conduct a search because I'm looking for this audit trail output and I can't remember where that is. I'll do a quick search for audit. Make audit trail entry for each login is yes. Yes, record, let's see. I don't think that's what I want. Let me do another search again for audit and see if I can find that output audit trail postings to the remote sysop that's what I want I want to turn that to no and I'll save and exit that so I'll hit F10 that's gonna save that and the only reason I'm showing you this is because if you're running this distribution you might want to make the same changes yourself just to make it a little bit more pleasant to log into um, I'm gonna go into my hardware setup here uh, in my last video I had already kind of corrected this but I made some changes and reinstalled so I have to go back in here and adjust this again but I'm cruising down and I'm looking for, where is it? I think it's uh, polling rate auto. I want to change this to, I can change it to anything, but this is what I had it when I was running a BBS back in the day. So for my purposes, that'll do. And I'll save that. And I can bring the BBS back online. Let that save. And when I get to my home screen, I'll press five and then the BBS will start loading again. So. I'll fast track us there, we'll log in, and we'll start playing around. Okay, I am back um, back up, I'm, I'm good to go. I wish I wish it could be that quick. It, it runs pretty quick locally now. I mean, if you're running it on modern hardware and you run this thing quick, even, even emulating a DOS session, this thing run, uh, boots up pretty quick with all the things that it's got loaded on it. Um, not quite that quick. That's the magic of editing that you're enjoying there. But let me bring the uh, BBS software directory website back up. This is where I found this distribution. I want to bring up... Um, some of the documentation that I found. Where is it? It's on the uh, developer's guide. The developer's guide was something that I always wanted. And, you know, I just couldn't afford it back then. I was, however old I was, I was 18 or 19. I was pretty, pretty recent out of high school. And this is what I wanted badly. I wanted to look at the, um, 
the the development uh, stuff for Major BBS, and I ended up getting it. I think I got it through shady circumstances. I think somebody else bought it and uh, let me take a look at it. I can't bring the the documentation up; it's not working here. Let me try it some other way. Um, but I had a, a friend or an associate who who actually had the uh, the development kit, and I was able to um, you know have a look at it and and get to know it a little bit, and was just completely fascinated. Uh, by the things that you can do with it. Uh, the problem, of course, was that all of the things that you needed in order to develop um, for the major BBS were actually kind of hard to come by if you were, you know, an 18-year-old and didn't have a whole ton of money. Um, you know, you needed to have the, not only the, the development kit itself, but you had to have all the supporting tools as well, which, which were relatively expensive back in the day. So the Borland C++ uh, compiler was necessary. You needed to have the Farlap DOS extender so that you can break beyond sort of the memory constraints of, of developing in DOS. Uh, you know, and all of this stuff cost money, and it was money that I didn't have. The development kit itself uh, from Galacticom was pretty expensive. Um, it was certainly more so expensive than the base BBS software itself. So it was nothing that I was ever able to kind of get my hands on legitimately. So I never really came, went very far with developing on the on the major BBS. But I did acquire a, a, some software called Major Pro, which did allow you to do some custom development on uh, major BBS using this sort of a runtime that ran as its own module on the BBS. Um, and then you were doing this sort of the scripting. It was a dynamic scripting language that allowed you to really quickly get up to speed with coding some custom modules on major BBS but with uh, with the constraint or the requirement of requiring the major pro runtime so not a lot of the software that was uh, major pro was very popular and of course not all of it was very good because it really allowed anybody uh, you know with a couple hundred dollars to get up to speed pretty quick uh, and and make some modules so these weren't you know professional developers who were putting stuff together but it was still kind of cool to get your hands on and uh, you know make some changes with major BBS it was fun anyway we'll go back and we'll log in and we'll take a look at some of the things that we used to do on major BBS it was good stuff let's see we log in oh that didn't work there it is all right let me do my little trick here and emulate and escape for full screen we'll log in as sysop it should be a little bit faster now and it sure is that's good. That's a lot better. It's pretty rough. Pretty rough looking at that. So I went in and I uh, went into the menuing tree and I, I trimmed it up a little bit and took out some of the things that I you know don't really remember or things that weren't too popular just so I could have a shorter game screen. But this is the stuff that I really remember. Uh, Tournament Lord being something that I was running on a, on a, on a bulletin board system. Uh, Androids was one as well. Tele Arena, I could never get my hands on that. That game was hugely popular, but there was uh, this really kind of strict licensing uh, requirement. If there was somebody in your area code who had this game, this guy would not let you buy it. You couldn't buy a license. And the way that it worked, at least in the Southern California or Los Angeles area, was bulletin board systems were, um, you know, they were located in uh, area codes that were outside of mine, but if they had relay numbers, meaning they had members who were in my area code who would kind of put a phone number in place and donate it to them in exchange for access. They would take these sort of local numbers and then forward them off to these LA numbers. So an LA BBS was effectively local to my area. So that even qualified by to, to exclude me from buying a license of Tele Arena. So I, I was never really able to get it from my own bulletin board system. It was a hugely popular game. I have no idea how to play it. I never got to play it. Um, but it was one that I, I always wanted because I knew it would be something that would get people to stick around, but couldn't couldn't actually get my hands on it. Uh, Tournament Lord was a really just a popular game called Legend of the Red Dragon. Uh, it had been around for a long time on bulletin board systems and finally came to the major BBS. Uh, you can go in and, and play uh, like you would on the classic door game, but uh, you could play with uh, other people online simultaneously. That was kind of the difference. Uh, I actually talked to the guy who... Did the he, he created the original Legend of the Red Dragon game and he talked about porting it over to Major BBS. He said it was just a giant pain, but it was totally worth it. He sold it, I think, for $19 as a board game, but for Major BBS, I think the license was something like $299. The guy had to make a killing. It was definitely worth his while to, I guess, go through the, the pain and agony of doing this. But this was fun stuff, you know, going in and creating your, your character here and You got your menu. Oh my gosh. Yeah, going to the forest. King Arthur's weapons. This was fun stuff. 
don't remember what you have to do. It's been a while. But I think you have to you have to get armor. I think you have to get a weapon. You might have something by default. I can't even remember. I'm going to go into the forest. I'm going to look for something to kill. I found a mosquito. I'm going to attack him. And I've killed him. So you get experience. You get gold. And you kind of just go through the same motions here over and over again. I'll look for something else to kill. I found a small bear. I will attack him. He hit me. I'll attack him again. Or I can run. I'm going to go for it. I got him. I got his gold. I got some experience. So you do that. You know, you, you pick up your gold. You pick up your experience. And you sort of advance very slowly over the course of many days. You have a, a certain number of times that you can play a day. Or a certain number of uh, activities that you can do a day. And, and it keeps you kind of coming back every day. Uh, this is a really popular game. This one was hugely... Uh, Hugely popular and somewhat enjoyable. So we'll quit. We'll see what else I've got here. Uh, let's see. The one that I remember that was pretty popular was Trade Wars 2002. Let me bring that one up. This was a fun game. Man, I, I mean, I haven't played this stuff in years. I mean, 15, 16 years I haven't played this stuff. So I'll kind of go through here and try to remember how this works, but I don't remember. In fact... It would be a terribly dull effort if I tried to even pretend I remember how to play Trade Wars 2002. Uh, Ringmasters was a fight game. I remember that one. Uh, Supernova was one of the ones that shipped with the entertainment pack package uh, with Galacticom's Entertainment Center. Uh, Blade Master, Crossroads of the Elements. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, Major Mud. This was a huge deal. Major Mud. So this this was a, a popular game that didn't have the licensing restrictions that Tele Arena had. So if I ever wanted to kind of uh, bring that user base on, this would have been one that I, could have, that I could have gotten. But again, it was one of those ones that I just wasn't into. It's this genre that it just doesn't appeal to me, the whole human dwarf gnome, you know, pick your race sort of thing. But uh, there were plenty of people who loved this stuff. I'll be a warrior. Do you want to be lawful? Absolutely I do. That all looks good. That all looks terrific. This was the full screen editor that we're looking at. This was really actually pretty neat for uh, for the for the BBS. So it was, uh, you know, it was rendered with the uh, typical ANSI graphics. So it looks like any other screen, but it's really it's a full screen editor, meaning it uh, it controls the confines of what you can and, and, and cannot edit. So it, it worked kind of, um, you know, like a like a like a terminal type of program, but it was it was totally workable in a regular sort of Telex or Procom uh, enabled. Uh, connection type. It was really neat. Press enter. So I think I've got a character. I can enter the realm now. Oh shoot, I didn't I didn't create a character, right? Anyway, I'll, I'll stumble through it again if I keep trying. Let me see what else we've got. Swords of Chaos, Major Mud, Fizul. Did I get rid of Kyrandia? Here's one. This is Kyrandia. So if you remember any of the uh, the old style uh, text adventure games like Zork or even Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the novel that was uh, pretty popular back in the day that was converted to a text-based adventure on the old 80s PCs. This is exactly what these things were. It's a text-based text, text -based adventure. You go in and uh, it's a sort of a mystical environment and you've got to do a lot of you know reading obviously but it's you know the walk north, walk south, pick up the weapon sort of thing. This one was pretty popular uh, initially when it first came out and then there was games like Trade Wars and uh, Tournament Lord that took over and and uh, really became a lot more more popular. Certainly, Major Mud became huge, but uh, early on in the days of Major BBS, Kyrandia was one that was pretty popular, and it was developed by a couple of the guys who uh, ended up being acquired by Galacticom and then becoming a, a really big part of their management team. But yeah, these a couple of these guys put this game together. It was really popular, and the name Kyrandia may sound familiar to you uh, if you've ever heard of the Legend of Kyrandia that came out in the, I think it was the early '90s. Um, uh, evidently, the guys who made that game. So Karandia with uh, Malcolm and Brandon, Hand of Fate, that whole bit, Malcolm's Revenge. Those guys actually went and paid for the rights to use the name Kyrandia on their game. Uh, I don't think that the two are all that closely related story-wise, but that's definitely a little bit of, little bit of history for you. I'm going to get out of this thing. So um, that's a couple of the games that were pretty popular on Major BBS. Of course, if you were a system operator, then you know, there was plenty more to it than just the games. Uh, the sysop menu. Uh, if you had a out-of-the-box install if you kept any of the menu tree defaults then you know that if you slash go remote it's gonna take you to your sysop menu oh man I haven't looked at this stuff in ages 
So, you know, there were a handful of things that you can do. You could send messages to everybody who was connected. You can actually bring up account specifics on user IDs. You could display the audit trail. We'll uh, start it from the beginning. So a quick look here at the audit trail. Not 100% sure why this would be too useful to anybody. If you needed to, I guess, look at the last portion of your audit trail, this is one way to do it. It's a lot to look at. You could choke on this stuff. Let me quit out of that. Let me see what else we've got. Um, you know, if you were logged in and you needed to shut down for whatever reason, you could certainly do that this way. It's going to give you options, I think, as far as how to shut down and how to come back up. But I think this is one way to really kind of screw yourself if you're remote. You can shut down and not come back up. You could run your cleanups. So if you had your auto cleanup that you needed to run, this is the nightly shutdown, and it would run through a handful of uh, events that were maybe programmed into each module, as well as the baseline core uh, software. This would run every night at a timed interval. You could go ahead and force it right now. It would drop everybody offline at a specific uh, uh, number of minutes and then come back up. We don't necessarily need to do that now. Uh, you've got... Uh, over here in this sec section here, you've got your type, copy, rename. So you've got some DOS commands that you can run for whatever reason. Uh, up here, if you needed to um, emulate a channel, this was really cool. If you were logged into your bulletin board system remotely, you could still have some of the capabilities of being at the local console. Um, and one of those was to emulate. So if you've got a guy on your uh, you know, third line uh, modem connection, you're like, what's this guy up to? You could, you know, you can emulate his channel. It's going to ask you what the user ID is or what the channel number is that you want to emulate. And then suddenly your screen is emulating their screen so you can kind of see what's going on there. It was really neat. I mean, this was this was software that was put together in the 80s and kind of carried over into the early 90s. It was, it was really cool. It was really cool stuff. It was pretty sophisticated stuff back in the day. And it was stuff that, I mean, I just, I was all over this for a period of, you know, three to five years. And some people, way more than that. I mean, people were working with this software for well over 10 years. It was, it was good stuff. Anyway, this is really more of a sort of a run through, uh, run down memory lane. Uh, nothing really all that more than that. Let me just go, let me look for one more thing. There was a trivia game that I thought, oh, it's right here on the front menu. Far West Trivia. This thing was great. Uh, hours and hours on this one. Let's see what's going on. I don't remember how to do this. Display, redisplay the current question. And bed knobs and broomsticks, Miss Price tries to turn Charlie into what animal? I have no idea. I did not see that movie. No clue. But these questions would come. I mean, we'd have a full system. All these people. Shoot. There's my hint. A something. Shoot. It's embarrassing. Anyway, um, we had you know a full system. It was full of people, and they'd all be in here. And it was a combination of chat. Oh, man, there's my hint right there. I win combination of chat and and playing trivia and these trivia questions would come out so it, it just it it completely changed the system when we added this module it was really fun really good stuff anyway um if you're interested in looking at this i highly recommend looking at this website and if you if you can read up here you'll, you'll know where to go i'm not 100 percent sure that i should link to it just because i'm not 100 percent sure of the validity of the software license i'm sure that there's somebody who may be out there who has a claim of ownership to this software so I don't necessarily want to make it totally easy for you to download and run this stuff, but if you can read, you, you pretty much know what you need to do. Um, but yeah, if you if you ran a software or, or a bulletin board system, or if you're familiar with the software at all, if you were a user of one of these old major BBS systems, I definitely recommend grabbing this software and downloading it and giving it a shot. And if you need some more details on how to run it, look at my previous video, which I'll link to right here. Thank you for watching. If you like this stuff, please go ahead and like this video. If you want some more, I've got more stuff. I've got programming. I've got some Raspberry Pi stuff that I like to talk about. Go ahead and subscribe. And if you got any ideas on, or if there's anything that you want to see, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all real soon.